Lord, I give you praise right now, Father, even for those that have contacted the ministry by way of um, online, Father. Lord, I just give you praise right now for the every gift of the Spirit that shall flow tonight. I give you praise tonight, Father, for the prayer that shall go forth tonight. I give you praise, God, for the word that shall come forth. I give you praise right now, God, for each and every individual, Lord, that will even hear this message in the archive. And, God, I just thank you right now, even those that will uh, watch this live, Father, I give you praise for the anointing that shall come upon them. Even now, as the word of knowledge is stirred, Father, Lord, I just thank you right now, even in the midst of your, uh, 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 of those that will listen to this in the tomorrow, God, in the tomorrow. Father, I thank you that you're healing headaches right now, Father. Chest pain is going away right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise, Father, for stomach cramps, God. You're healing stomach cramps right now. Father, I give you praise, Lord, for back pain. Lord, you're healing back pain, Father. Lord, I give you praise, Father, right now for sciatica nerve, God, on the left side and the right side, Father. Lord, I thank you that even those, Father, that have just been recently diagnosed, knows, God, with different ailments, Lord, those that have heard, heard bad reports from the doctor, Lord, I give you praise right now for supernatural healing in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you're touching them right now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord, even for the one that is suffering from, from uh, uh, muscle spasms right now, God, I give you praise, Father, for supernatural healing, nerve pain. God is healing nerve pain right now in the name of Jesus. I even hear the Lord saying that uh, uh, there are those that Matter of fact, there's a there's a there's a single mother. You got a, a baby that's been uh, having a um, uh, 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 ear an ear infection or ear pain or uh, there's some th- there's some things going as they're ringing in the ear and this might be multiple things that are happening right now. I hear the Lord saying He's healing the baby right now. Uh, 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 there's a there's a young lady right now around the age of 12. You connected to somebody that's or there's someone that's connected to her that's listening, and you may not be listening now. You may be listening in the archives. I'm letting God use me even in the uh, as we move forward in the days to come. But I hear the Lord saying there's a 12-year-old uh, uh, girl. God is healing her body right now. She's struggling with different um different symptoms that the doctors are not able to figure out. Uh, uh, there's different struggles that are going on within uh, uh, within the realm of, I see somewhere within her sleeping. Uh, uh, it's almost like a, a gastritis. Uh, uh, there's uh, all types of a pain in the esophagus. There's a little bit thing of, more uh, uh, going on uh, with this young lady. Uh, it's almost as if uh, 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 she's purposely causing herself to throw up. Amen. And uh, I, I hear the Lord saying he's bringing healing, healing to that household, that the, there's healing coming to the parents in the, that area where they may be able to minister to her with love. Uh, this, this, this young lady really needs some love right now. And if somebody's connected to her. I don't know who that is. I'm just flowing in a word of knowledge. So, Father, we just give you praise right now for the anointing. Uh, uh, there's, there's, there's someone that's struggling with another team that's um, – that's, that's on the verge of 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 of, of, of all types of emotional uh, failure. Uh, they're they're even speaking regarding suicide and wanting to run away. They can't wait to get away from home. I, I, this is I don't know why I'm hearing this. This is odd. I, I I really hear the Lord saying some of y'all really need to get a hold of your kids real quickly, especially some of the teenagers that are just entering into high school. Some of the ones that are just getting uh, um, conformed to uh, a, a more uh, uh, older crowd or older environment. I'm talking about young teens. I'm looking at a young teen between the ages of, of, of 13, 14, 15, around that age. Uh, uh, God says begin to really pray for them right now. Some of you really need to begin to lift them up in prayer, those uh, teenagers. There's a young adult woman uh, that's listening to me. God says that he's dealing with your heart. Uh, there's been some disappointment. There's been lots of failure. Uh, you're around the age of 23. Uh, female. God says, I'm dealing with your heart. I'm dealing with some failure. I'm dealing with some disappointment, some things that you were just, uh, 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 that's just really downright uh, bothering you right now in this season. Uh, uh, there's just been really a, a lot of uh, hang-ups that you've had to experience, and you really feel like giving up, but the Lord is bringing strength to your mind. The Lord says he's bringing strength to your body. God is moving by his spirit on your behalf tonight. I didn't plan to go this way. Praise God. I know this is the Lord. But God says, I'm healing you, uh, uh, daughter. I'm, 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 I'm bringing a freshness. I'm bringing a newness uh, to your life even in this season. Praise God. Amen. There's, uh, there, there's, there's others that are listening right now. God says that, that he, he's dealing with you even where you've had uh, 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 felt that he left you. 
in the times when you were in your hard places. Uh, that's what I hear him saying. Is some of you that have been in hard places, you've been in 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 in, in hard times, you've been in hard dif- in difficult situations where it's been difficult to pay bills, it's been difficult to 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 relate to other people. It's been times when you would get up and you don't really have nothing to do. And and I'm talking about people who got jobs, who who get up and go every day. And there's been times when you don't move, you you don't even pull the shades back. You've been suffering from depression and 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 been struggling with all different types of voices in your head where the enemy is telling you to just throw in the towel and give up on your salvation. I'm here to tell you today that God says I'm bringing restoration to your household. I'm bringing restoration to your finances. I'm, re- I'm redefining. I'm, I'm redefining what you've been going through. I'm, I'm, I'm recalibrating your situation. And, 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 and he says I'm repositioning you. He says He says even though it, he, he says that weeping may endure for a night, but your joy, come on somebody, your joy is coming in the morning. God is about to move on, on, on many of your behalf. Some of you have just kind of thrown in the towel secretly and quietly behind the scenes, and you put on your church face on Wednesdays and, and, and Sunday mornings. You come back until you get into praise and worship. You get in the presence of God's people, and you all really you know, act like nothing's going wrong and, and everything is okay. But God says, I'm pulling back the covers, and I'm restoring those hidden places, those secret places where you have I felt like I failed you. God says, I'm healing you in those secret places. I'm healing you in your heart tonight. I'm healing you in your mind. I'm healing you in your emotions. I'm healing you in those places where you felt that were too hard for me to deal with, says the Spirit of the living God. Ooh, I feel that tonight. God says, I'm, 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 I'm dealing with the hard places. I'm dealing where you felt like you you haven't been complete. I'm, I'm dealing with those places. Some of y'all need to share this video. There's some people that need to hear this. He says, I'm dealing with those with those places and where you felt defeated, where you felt like you wasn't victorious, where you felt like you could never make it to the next level, where you felt like there was no hope, there was no tomorrow, and, 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 and even in your depression, God says, I'm healing you in your depression. I'm healing you in your wounded souls. And, your, and, and, and some of you, some of you are still struggling with some things. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing that many of you, and I'm talking to the ones that's in their 40s and 30s, some of you are struggling in areas where you never got healed when you was a child. You've been in everybody's deliverance line. You've been in everybody's uh, uh, prayer line. You've been on everybody's prayer call. You, you've been in, in all different types of prophetic circles, and you've been all, received all types of prophetic words. But there are, there are some there are some areas in your life, there's some wounds in your spirit that are still open and still festering, and some of the wounds are infected. And God says, he says, I'm bringing healing. Ha, oh, hallelujah. He says, I'm bringing healing. I, I just hear him say, it's a, I'm like a bomb in Gilead. He's bringing healing to those, those wounded areas. I'm bringing healing to those places where you felt like your, your mother abandoned you. Your father, he disconnected from you. Your, your, your sisters and your brothers don't want to have nothing to do with you no more. And, and you've been sorely offended. You, 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 you've been put in places where no relationship has worked in your life. You, you struggle with, 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 with spouses and divorces, and you struggle with, with, with trying to get along with neighbors. You always seem to get caught up in all different types of animosities and, and, and remorse and resentment with different people, and, and even in the church where people will say they love you, you've been kicked out, you've been rejected, you've been stepped on, talked about, slandered, your, your character is put out there. God says tonight, I'm healing those broken places. I'm, I'm, I'm healing those wounded areas. I'm, I'm, I'm sealing up those old wounds, and, 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 and I'm, I'm getting all the infection out, that infection. Uh, glory to God. That infection, some of you got infected wounds where, where you tried to keep covering it up. He says, no more, says the Lord, no more can you continue to cover up these wounds. No more will you walk around and pretend like you ain't been hurt and you ain't been in pain. He says, no more will you walk around and pretend like nobody rejected you and nobody wanted to have nothing to do with you. He says, no more. This is what I hear the Lord says. No more will you continue to walk around and pretend like nothing happened to you. He says healing is coming to your house. Restoration is coming to your house tonight, says the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I ain't even got started yet. I, 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 I just feel the Holy Ghost. Praise God. 
I, I just feel, I feel the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I'm going to have to start this over because, no, I don't. Do you really want to start this over? No, I want to keep it going. Praise God. Amen. All right, we just going to probably have to redo this because it's really not working correctly tonight. Amen. But we give God praise. I thank you all for, for joining us tonight. Again, y'all go and share this because um, uh, I, I, I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak a little bit more. I'm going to pray for some of you tonight. and going to open up the lines, and we're going to trust and believe God uh, for what He has to do with Him. But real quickly, I, I'm going to jump in the Word, and I'm going to share a couple of things real quick. Uh, something that's just really, and I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of be speaking to the apostles tonight. And uh, if you got, if you in an apostolic church, you're going to catch this. The prophets, they're going to catch this. If you've been around a bunch of apostles, you're going to catch this. Amen. But this ain't going to be no watered-down milk tonight. This is going to be something good, something fresh. Matter of fact, I'm going to reference from a book probably y'all can't get. And I'm going to just put it up here. It's probably going to be backwards on your screen. Uh, but it's a uh, it's an older book. I got this while I was attending Crusaders Church in uh, Chicago, Illinois, uh, well over 10 years ago, maybe longer. And I know it's not available. If you find it online, it's probably going to cost you a grip, and I really mean a grip. Uh, but it's it's one of those difficult books to get a hold to. But it's the uh, Apostolic Dictionary by uh, Apostle John Eckhart. And, uh, and and what's been in my spirit, I've actually been sharing this with different individuals I've been speaking with this past week. And, um, and, and what's been really stirring in my spirit is the uh, word identity. Identity. And so the Lord took me. He took me here because I remember reading this out of this book years ago. I pulled it out of the archive. I seriously did. And, um, excuse me, now we'll go to the book of Leviticus, uh, chapter 8, uh, verse 23. And I'm um, going to talk about the thumb. I'm going to talk about the thumb. And I got, my, my thumbprint is actually pretty unique. I remember I was around age uh, probably 13 or 14. And and I and I scarred this thumb up really bad, and I still got the mark. That's something about even with your. And I just got done praying about this, and I wasn't even planning on going this direction either. But it's something about even when when you're wound when you're wounded in the spirit, when you're when you're scarred in your spirit, in your heart, uh, in your mind, you you be, uh, there's a your your uh, your entire makeup takes on a different identity. See, my, my thumbprint identity was perfect. I'm going to just so show it up here because I got a mark on there if y'all can see it. But, but that, it's been there probably more than 30 years now. I've had this mark on my finger. And, uh, and so my identity changed when I got that mark. And a lot of us, uh, and some of you, what you've been experiencing in this previous season and, and different seasons of your life, you got wounded, you got hurt, you got hit with different things that, that uh, uh, caused you hurt and pain. Um, there were things that, that em embarked upon your life that you didn't even ask for. There's some stuff that just happened, and it just, it, it just occurs like that in our life. and nothing you can do about it. But, but what, what ends up occurring is that once you receive that mark uh, across your original identity, your identity changes. Now you got that mark. You marked and, and, and one of the things I, I, I like this, uh, that when we were in a conference back in April, Apostle Jeremy Gibson was here, and he said something interesting. He was talking about the animal kingdom and how, how uh, certain animals, and I think he was, was, was referring to the, uh, the lion and how when the lion marks his mate, he, he marks her, he, he literally cuts her to let her know that, he's, he, that she's his. And I, and I thought that was interesting. But y'all know God does the same thing with us. He'll He'll mark us. He'll mark us spiritually, and He'll He'll make sure that everything spiritual understands and know that we are His. <laughs> Some of y'all go catch this tonight. And so uh, I I I gotta go to this scripture. Let me go to Leviticus chapter eight and verse twenty three. And I pray y'all uh, uh catch this. And I'm definitely this is something that. God just kind of downloaded in my spirit literally at the last minute. This is just going to be powerful. Praise God. In Leviticus chapter 8, verse 23, and I'm in the King James Version, it says, And he slew it, uh, and Moses took of the blood of it and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. 
These are all identifiable places. And, and we're going to get off into this in a minute. So I'm going to read here what Apostle John Eckhart's, uh, what, he, what he shows us in, in reference to uh, the thumb. And he says here the thumb, and, um, it, which is the hand, with four fingers and a thumb is often used to describe the five-fold ministry. The prophet is presented by the forefinger, the pointing finger. Come on, somebody. It says, uh, and, and, and then and, uh, the evangelist is represented by the middle finger. I'm not going to give you all the middle finger, but some of you all know where I'm coming from. Hey, praise God. It says, and, um, and then the evangelist is presented by the middle finger that extends the farthest from the hand. So, you know, I'll just hold my hand up. This is my middle finger, and it extends the farthest from the hand, symbolizing outreach. And I know some of this, like y'all, like I heard, I learned this before. Some of y'all need to learn it again because you still ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. And it says the pastor is presented by the ring finger, which is the, the ring finger. And I'm, I'm purposely holding up my left hand because it, it symbolizes if, if you were married, it would be the ring finger. And it, and it also talks about how uh, the the the, the uh, pastor is is married to the sheep. But you really are. If y'all don't know what it means to pastor, and, and this is why I say, the, even the Bible says that pastors or elders they require double honor. You know, and, and I love I love talking about the pastors because it's something special about pastoring. Everybody you don't have a grace to pastor. Apostles, you don't always have a grace to pastor. I'm gonna say this one more time. Apostles, you don't always have a grace to pastor. Uh, prophet, you don't always have a grace to pastor. Evangelist, you don't always have a grace to pastor. Teachers, you may have a little bit more grace to pastor. But if your teacher's anointing is apostolic, that that's going to probably hurt some folks a little bit because you're going to be a little rigid with your teaching. And you're going to want to rebuke some people sometimes, so you're not always going to be very friendly. Come on, somebody. And so it's going to, sometimes you're going to come off rough. Sometimes you're going to come off loving. But when you're an apostolic teacher, I'm an apostolic teacher. So when you come off real rough and rugged, people don't receive you as if you was a pastor. Pastors are a lot more caring, a lot more carefree. You know, they, they go through a lot for you. But they do require double honor. Why am I spending time with these pastors? Because I've, I've, pa- the pastors have really been in my spirit. This past weekend, I know, like I said, I, they uh, they really touched my heart. I, I pastored for a season, and, and and again, like the Bible says, pastors require double honor. Anytime you go from pastoring as a young man, and you start you start pastoring different families, you start marrying off the families, you start baptizing all the kids. Then, of course, you go off to you start burying auntie and grandma and them, and, and you're marrying a whole another generation. A pastor has almost you, you, as a pastor, pastors that live on to be old in age, they probably touch, in an average, on a whole family, they'll probably touch five and six generations of people, maybe seven, if God gives them strength. And that's a lot. I mean, you again, you marrying, burying, you, you baptizing, you spend a lot of time with families. You, you spend a lot of time on, uh, uh, in the hospital with them. You're praying for them. And, and pastoring is a full-time job. It's not something that you just wake up and decide, oh, I'm going to be a pastor one day. You know, it's a lot of work to go into pastoring. And so pastoring is probably, and, and, and I give God praise. I give, I give God a, a praise for many of our pastors, whether they walk in error, whether they never let you get up and preach in their church, and they probably shouldn't because you probably would have chased off half their people in the first place. You know, I see a lot of that on Facebook. Uh, y'all might have to get out that church. Yeah, you probably do if the pastor ain't letting you do too much. But then again, some of them pastors was wise not to let you do nothing at all because you wasn't going to do nothing but hog the mic and try to prophesy to everybody and chase away the people. <laughs> Praise God. And so it's necessary that we honor and, and, and we give double honor to our pastors. Our pastors deserve double honor. And, so, and I want to encourage you all, even today, when you get up Sunday morning and you go to your local church, take time to honor your pastor. Take time to love on your pastor. He, the average pastor that, that work a job, and some of them have to work because half y'all don't sow and don't give, a, don't give an offering, let alone a tithe, because half the time y'all trying to find a reason not to believe in tithing. And, and, and so, uh, so half the people 
who 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 sit up under a uh, 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 really cool pastors. I mean, pastors that will go an extra mile. Some of them pastors have paid your bills. Some of them pastors have fed your families. Them pastors have done so much for you. Take time to honor your pastor. Don't wait till the month of October when it's Pastor's Appreciation Month. Go and honor your pastor. Tell him that you love him. Tell her that you love them. And just just honor them. Put some put something in their hand to let them know you love them. I'm just going to put it right. I don't know why I felt led to go that way, but some of y'all need to take time out and honor your pastor. Don't come up there pulling on him and, and his wife or her and her husband all the time. You always want a prophetic word. You always want them to rub on your old forehead with some oil and pray for you. They're praying for you and your bad kids and, 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 and all your little bad situations you got going on in your life. Every, time, every Sunday come around the corner. You always up in the deliverance line and the food line, and you ain't honoring your pastor. Honor your men and women of God. That's all I got to say. Somebody, somebody needed to hear that tonight. Honor your man and woman of God. Those people go a long way. And some of them, yeah, they probably do need some assistance. They probably do need some apostles and prophets to come in there and probably wreck house and probably impart into the people, probably do some signs, wonders, and miracles. Some of those pastors do need an upgrade in their song and, and their prophetic worship. Some of those pastors do need prophetic music. Some of those pastors do need the glory cloud to come in. Some of those pastors do need to work more and deliverance and cast out devils. Some of them pastors do need to do more teaching. However, you need to honor your pastors. Honor your men and women of God. Honor them. Stop stop pushing stop pushing away your pastor because he he he, he didn't he didn't show you no attention this past summer or, or this past Sunday. Stop pushing away and, and talking about the pastor ain't doing this in the past re, half the reason why most folks ain't blessed because you put your mouth on a man or woman of God, and you should have. Regardless if they wasn't doing what they were supposed to do, you should have never put the, put your uh, your mouth on them in the first place. So let me get back. I'm off that soapbox. Let me get back to this. We're talking about the thumb. Amen. So the pastor is represented by the, the ring finger, symbolizing being married to the saints. The teacher is presented by the little finger, the finger that provides balance. And, and, and that's what the teachers do. They, they provide balance. Now, you, lo- you know, I, I see a lot of people do this, and, 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 and you know, it's like party, dude, party, you know, whatever. Uh, but, but one thing about the, about the teachers, uh, and, 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 and this is why we really need to put more emphasis on apostolic and prophetic teachers, because we need teachers that can step up and they can provide balance to the teaching. Some of y'all, uh, like I was talking about on Monday night, um, they can't wait to get up and get out of here. Everybody wants the rapture to come, but half of y'all don't want to go preach the gospel. The Bible says when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in the entire, in, in, in the globe, in the whole world, amen, then, but see, but we still got some error in our teaching concerning end times. So, uh, it, it, and I can tell you right now, if your end time teaching is jacked up, your kingdom knowledge is even the more jacked up. That's another story or another message. The apostle is presented by the thumb. The apostle is presented by the thumb. So uh, um, the, the hand is not complete without the thumb. So let me say it again. The hand, come on somebody, is not complete without the thumb. So, you, you know, almost everything that we do is, is, is connected to the thumb. Every, th- every time you grip, you need your thumb. I remember early, early last year, I believe it was in um, – um, it was early 2018. I, I broke my wrist, and 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 the main part of the, the uh, of, of the hand that was immovable, or any time I moved it, was my thumb. And and I used my right hand, and right with my right, so I really couldn't do anything without my thumb. Most of our churches are in the same predicament. We really can't do much. We don't have much movement. We don't have much guidance. We don't have great foundation, and and, and we don't have we, we don't have unshakable faith connected to miracles and signs and wonders because we're without our thumb. And our thumb is actually our greatest, our, our, our greatest uh, print, our greatest identity. Here, let me keep going. The thumb gives the hand its full function and power. The thumb is needed for grasping and warfare. There was a, um, here, I'll keep on reading before I go into this. So Adani Bazak, king of the Canaanites, had his thumbs. The Bible says, had his thumbs, 
and, and, and great toes, his big toes. He had his thumbs and his big toes cut off when the Lord delivered the Canaanites unto Judah's hands. That's in the book of Judges, chapter uh, 1, verses 5 through 7. This hindered his ability to fight and move. You know you can't do nothing without, imagine walking around with no thumbs and no big toes. You, you lose your balance. There's no balance there. And, and, and so the church's ability to fight and move is hindered without the function of the apostles. And so it's unnecessary for, for the apostles to, 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 to rise up. Notice I'm using my thumbs. It's, a, it's necessary for the, for the apostles to arise. The thumb symbolizes the power and strength. The thumb is required for ministry. Like we just read here in the verse, the blood was placed upon Aaron's thumb. The Bible said it was placed, placed upon his thumb. So it's, it's, it's necessary that we understand our identification. Now I'm going to shift a little bit. I'm going to take you out a little higher, but I'm getting hot, so the Holy Ghost is all over me, so I know I'm about to teach this thing. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so now, now that we understand how, how, how the hand is symbolic to the fivefold, you got the apostles, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. I'm going to say this again for the ones in the back. You got the, 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 the apostle who represents the thumb, you got the prophet, or the, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and then there's the teacher. And so, our, our our greatest asset to the church, where we receive where we receive our grip and and warfare, comes from the apostle. Now, one thing and I taught this in, the, in, in in a couple of months ago. It's an, it's, it's, and it's actually one of my one of my teachings that I keep as and it, it'll probably be releasing something on that in writing soon. But one thing about the apostle's mantle, the mantle that rests upon the apostle is, is, is not like we, we, we often hear the teachings about how Elijah cast his mantle down on Elijah or, or anything like that because he had a tangible mantle. But in the spirit realm, apostles carry what we call an invisible mantle. It's a, it's a mantle that can't be seen, but it's much like a thumbprint in the spirit is, is noticeable to everything moving in the spirit realm. See, some of y'all, let me tell you something. You wanna, you, if, if you really want to identify an, an, a strong apostolic church, I, I guarantee you there is warfare going on up in there. There's oftentimes great divisions, as Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians. Let me go over here, and I'll, I'll read it to you, because uh, most apostolic, strong apostolic churches are identified by their warfare. And if it ain't no warfare going on in your church, y'all always real good on communion day, y'all eating chips and, and drinking Kool-Aid and for communion, and, and, and y'all good with, with passing around the, the, uh, the, the hymn book and, and whatever else that y'all got going on up in there, money good, you ain't never having a, 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 a woe over here and, and, a, and a woo over there, then, you know, y'all good. But if you, find, if, 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 if you find a strong apostolic church, I guarantee you, you're going to encounter some warfare. I'll show you, I'll show you how the devil is constantly trying to come in the back door of your praise and worship team. I'm talking about a real strong spiritual hub. I'll show you how the enemy is always trying to impact the mind of the saints who are not on the same accord as, 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 the, as the apostolic and prophetic leaders in the church. I'll show you how the intercessors are constantly bombarding the heavens through prayer and fasting. This is an apostolic church. I'll show you how they grip the fists of God, of God in the spirit, and they constantly beating the devil upside the head about their children, about their families, about their spouses, about their jobs. I'll show you where deliverance is taking place, where demons are being cast out, where people are getting healed, people are getting filled with the Holy Ghost. The power of God is moving, but there is great warfare. I'll show you where witches have been assigned to try to take down these ministries. They're astral projecting and trying to come into church. And what they're looking for is it's one or two people clicking up and trying to bring division into church. These are churches full of warfare. And I'll show you where they don't sit great in numbers either. Y'all, some, some, some folks like to hide up in the mega church because they can, they can, they can propagate they, 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 uh, they, uh, they other lifestyles. 
they can they can live unholy when they want to live. They 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 got all types of sexual perversion going on behind closed doors, and, and they know they know good and well that they're not getting ready to connect with 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 strong seers in the spirit. I, take a strong apostolic church, and I guarantee you, not only are the praise and worship leaders prophetic, but they intercessors. They, they consecrated themselves way before they got up there to sing. And when the Holy Ghost moved, when God began to minister through, the, through prophetic song, the worship is so intense that people have their hands raised and they're getting deliverance in the worship. They're getting breakthroughs when the Spirit of God comes on them. These are, these are thumb-type ministries. These ministries are apostolic. They have been identified by every principality moving in that region, and they're constantly trying to break them up because they know if that ministry get a breakthrough, if that spiritual hub start teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, if they start teaching uh, and, and, and releasing truth over the atmosphere, if they start causing deliverance to the people that come there, if they, if, if they start causing prophetic words to come to pass, God's going to break open finances, healing going to take place, place, miracles going to take place, there are going to be all types of divine movement in the city, come on somebody, y'all got to talk with me here, God is moving by his spirit in these places, and the enemy is constantly trying to send something through the back door, if he can't get through the apostle's door, he coming through somebody else's door, he coming through one of the, anybody that's connected to the leadership, Anybody that's connected to the things of God and anything moving in the spirit realm, the enemy is constantly trying to bombard these doors. And see, and y'all come up in here with your slew foot sales, with your religious thinking, and you say, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, it ain't really a whole lot of people that go to this church. You know, it's kind of small in number. Uh, yeah, I feel the love. I, I, I do. I really do. But, you know, we were really looking for something else. We wanted some programs for the kids. You know, we want to be able to put them in kids' church. And, and you know, we want to be able to do this with, uh, and, and, you know, have this program or that program. You looking for programs or are you looking for God? Are you looking for children's church or are you looking for the kingdom of God? Are you looking for, for, for chicken dinners on Sundays and, and, and walks out of the park, or are you looking for the Spirit of God? And so, and, and so God has to come in and he has to break up this fallow ground in our religious thinking thinking so that he can start to move by his Spirit. And this is where you get great warfare at, when you come into the presence of an apostolic church where, there's, where, where people become apostolic, they, they, the, 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 the metron. The, the measure of grace that's on that church, you can walk up in there and things begin to break. Things begin to break off your life in the spirit. Things begin to break off the life of, of, of your children and your children's children. I mean, you're talking about great breakthrough, great, great, great power, great grace comes upon you and your family as a result of being connected to these church. And don't get it twisted for one minute if you don't think that the enemy is going to come after you because you connected with that anointing. Don't think for one minute that the enemy not going to come after your spouse because you connected to that anointing. Don't think for one minute that it's going to be some disruption and distraction and all different types of things coming upon your job once you connect with that apostolic anointing. The Bible says if you go in the book of Acts, chapter 14, I believe it's the, it, it, it is. As a matter of fact, I'm right actually over there. <laughs> Praise God. But in the book of Acts, chapter 14, Verse 22, it says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation. The Bible says through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Some of y'all just enter into somebody's church, some religious program that, that people that are singing Kumbaya, Lord, and Amazing Grace, and again, they passing the chips in communion on Sunday. They up there with their robes and collars, and don't get me wrong, I bless the Lord for you, but I'm going to tell you right now, as we move it into 2020, you don't need all of that. God is looking for a people that's going to worship him in spirit and in truth. God is looking for a people who has a, who has a heart of a worshiper. He's looking at the worshiper's altar. He ain't looking at how groomed you are on Sunday mornings or first Sundays. He's looking at your worshiper's altar. God can care less about your vestments. He's looking at your worshiper's altar. God can care less about your, 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 your bishop chair your ring and whatever else entitled title you, you carry, God can care less about it. He's looking at the worshiper's altar. We have become a church that got no power. 
There's no way in the world I should come to your church and visit every Sunday and, 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 and there's no power, nobody getting healed, nobody getting delivered. The only altar call is when you come and give an offering. Just dismiss me with that. Just get on up out of here. A true apostolic church bears the blueprint of uh, in the spirit or the or the print of uh, or of an invisible mantle in the spirit, and it's identifiable to everything moving in the kingdom of darkness. They can see you. They know what's up, and that's why they're going around and and, and they re, and they releasing all different types of, uh, of of things against your life, against your your family, and they're trying to find loopholes and whatever they can to to to, to try to get you distracted from the real purpose of the kingdom. That's an apostolic church. You know, I, I taught I, I taught on uh, types of apostles uh, some time ago, and uh, I actually still got that in recording, and and I talked about how. Uh, um, there, there are types of apostolic churches that literally, they, they literally catch hell. They catch it. They, they, they openly expose. And a lot of times, there are other types of uh, apostolic churches where the intercessors just kind of give up. And anybody that was a part of San Antonio Kimmy, y'all know we put emphasis on intercession. We, we was interceding sometimes on a Excuse me, on a regular, we would take out one week here, two weeks there, 10 days there, 21 days there from fasting and prayer. We constantly bombarded heaven through prayer because it was necessary. You, the intercessors are like police in the spirit, especially when they're prophetic. And if you don't have strong apostolic and prophetic intercessors, people who can see, I'm talking about the seers, I'm talking about prophets who are seers, those are the kind of people you want praying for you, don't, don't come to me because I, you, can, you can observe on my face, I'm stressing out, come to me and tell me, Apostle, I had this dream, Apostle, I had this open vision, Apostle, I had this happen, or the God showed me this, and while I was in the Word, God was showing me, and He was revealing to me that, or I felt something in the spirit realm, show me strong apostolic and prophetic intercessors, and I show you an apostle who's pushing past kingdom of darkness, and he's tearing down every stronghold and coming against every principality trying to govern that region. That's how we work as a team. The Bible says here, let me, let me, I, I, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, so I love reading through scripture. I'm still old school. I don't pop nothing up on the screen. I like to flip through the pages because my Bible is marked. It's identifiable in the spirit, praise God. But the Bible says that in, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, I'm going to read that because some of y'all need to be reminded. Stop looking for, stop looking for ap apostolic platforms and prophetic platforms, teaching platforms. I, I, I want to be a pastor. Somebody prophesied to me I was going to be a pastor, apostle. So, you know, I, I've been really believing God, and, and one day I'm going to start up a church. Just because somebody prophesied to you about being a pastor does not mean you're supposed to start a new church. I, I, I'll tell you this right now. As we're moving into in, in 2020, we are not going to see the traditional church model that y'all used to. You, you're not going to see the, the pastoral settings where the pastor comes in. And, you know, in, 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 in the Afro-American community, most pastors that first start out, they go purchase a building and they do all the work they sell. Some of them are successful at it. Don't get me wrong. But we're moving into a time now where God's going to, going to use the, the intercessors will go first. I'm just going to say it. The intercessors are going first, whether y'all like it or not, because they're praying and they're seeking God's face, uh, uh, and, and, and they're believing God for a move of God in their region. And as they begin to go forth, they're going to be all types of Macedonian calls. So if you've already been commissioned as an apostle, God's hand is coming upon you. And I can tell you, in 2010, when, when God began to speak to me, I had already been ordained an apostle. I had already planted a couple of churches. But in 2010, I had a Macedonian call. God began to speak to me. He said, son, you're going to Texas. And when I send you to Texas, I'm sending you to a place, a place where everything is big. And y'all know that is, it, 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 that's an old saying. Everything in Texas is big, and everything here is big. And, and, and so and God began to deal with me. So that was a Macedonian call to come to Texas. Amen. So some of y'all can begin to get and receive a Macedonian call to go to different places. That don't mean you're going to have to uproot right away. It's going to probably take some time because Paul, 
when Paul got his Macedonian call, the Bible says that the man that he saw in the vision was not the same man that he came into contact with. It, it, it said, he said, I saw in the vision a man from Troas, and he spoke to him and told him to come to Macedonia. So this is one of those teachers. I'm going to put this out there. But that wasn't no man. That was an angel. There was an angelic principality that began to speak to Paul and beckon him to come because there have been some intercessors. Keep reading Acts chapter 16. I'm in the Word. The Bible says that there were some women that was over by the, by the, wall, by the water or the lake or wherever it was. He said there were some women over there that should have been praying, but they wasn't praying. But apparently that was a place of prayer. And so some prayer had gone forth. So Paul came into contact with some women. He didn't come into contact with a man. That's a Macedonian call. So, there, so as we see the church structure and we see the system shifting, there's going to be a Macedonian call that's going to result as the intercessors are praying. See, the enemy wearing y'all intercessors out. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Some of y'all have been called to pray. Some of y'all are already on assignment and don't even realize it. God is waking you up in the middle of the night and we hours of the night, and he's trying to get you on point so you can begin to pray. There are certain things that he wants to show you. There are supernatural encounters that God wants to do or, or, or deal with you on. Some of you should have been caught up in the spirit. But because you can't get caught up out the bed, God can't catch you up in the spirit. Some of y'all should have been seeing different things. You should have had angelic encounters, and you should have been seeing different things in the spirit. You should have been walking through different portals and hearing prophetic words spoken over you while you sleep. You should have been hearing all of this a long time ago, but because you're not hearkening to the voice of God and you're not sensitive to the move of God's spirit, it's difficult for him to get you on point. So I'm sounding the alarm tonight. It's time for y'all to begin to move. Come on, somebody. It's time for y'all to begin to move in the spirit and allow God to use you in, 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 the, in, the, in the systems and in the, in, in, in the elements of prayer. Some of y'all just got to get up. Get up and pray. Get up and hear from God. Walk the floor at night. Take your Bible and put down your phone and walk the floor. You remember them old saints. They used to hold their Bible in their hand, and they used to walk around. I remember my mama used to do that, and some of them girls that she used to pray with. And they'd be around and all night long just praying and praying. And God is calling so many of y'all back to prayer, back to intercession, back into his presence, back into a, a posture of prayer. A posture of prayer is head down, heart up. Come on, somebody. God is calling us back into this. And many of you, you say you're prophetic, you want to be apostolic, you feel like God is pushing you to the next level, he's calling you to upgrade, he's saying, he's saying come up here, my daughter, come up here, my son. But some of you can't get there until you get into the presence of God through prayer. And as we begin to move into prayer, God's going to begin to shift some things in our local houses. God's going to shift some areas where there's going to be a need for apostolic and prophetic teachers. There's going to be a need for evangelism, for outreach. There's going to be a need for deliverance. There's going to be a need for miracles. There's going to be a need for so many different things in the body of Christ. And, and, and God's going to begin to bring it all together. The Bible says, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. Then after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, help, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. And so as God began to realign us, as he began to bring things back into perspective and we began to become sensitive to the, to the voice of God, he'll, we'll, we'll start to see some changes in the body of Christ. And they're upon us. They're upon us whether we like it or not. God's getting ready to deal with the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I think I'm done right there, y'all. I'm done right there. But I, I, I really feel the presence of the Lord here tonight. And, and, and I'm real thankful for everybody that joined us. Uh, if you haven't called in, I'm getting ready to pull the board up here. But if you haven't called in, and um, if, if I haven't ministered to you in the last two weeks, because I know some people like to suck up all the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want a prophetic. And I'll know. I'll know. God will let me know. He's trying to sneak in and get another prophetic word. But uh, for those that, um, that, that need, need prayer tonight, uh, if you feel that a need to want to call in, you're more than welcome to. We do have 
Uh, the line open is 605-313-5111. That 111 is prophetic. That's, translate, uh, that's, that's transitioning. Um, even the five, we talked about the five-fold ministry. Some of you are trans, uh, transitioning uh, into a greater, uh, a greater grace in the five-fold ministry. That number was so profound. I don't know. I've been looking at numbers in the last couple of weeks. God's been really showing me numbers. Praise God. Amen. But that, uh, you, that you can call in 605-313-5111. And uh, the passcode is 682357. Praise God. And so uh, I, I really sense that uh, the Lord uh, wants to do some great things tonight. Amen. I also, I, I, I'm challenging some of you all. I've been, I've been saying this, and, and I'm going to just be straight up. I live by faith, so, and I have a need. Most of the need is for ministry. Praise God. There's some things that we need to do. I need to rebuild a new website. Uh, and then we also have uh, some things that are coming up in the San Antonio area. If you go back up to the page, the, there's, there's uh, places where you can uh, where you can drop a seed offering, whatever God put on your heart to, to sow. I don't put my, uh, amounts on it. Amen. But whatever God give you, uh, you're more than welcome to. Because some people do ask and some people don't. I mean, I probably have people who used to come on the line back in the day. and I mean, they suck up everything that they possibly can and, and never sow a dime. <laughs> and it should be surprised. But, you know, to God be the glory. But it's the ones that really connect, that really sow. I'm telling you all something about that. And I was sharing that scripture on Monday night. Um, and I've done this for years, uh, way before I was ordained as an apostle even, and, and one thing that I learned is how to uh, connect with the grace and anointing that was on, on the life of, 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 of those that already went before me. You'd be surprised the honor that, that, that you receive in sowing and how God opened up doors. Uh, but there was a scripture that I had read the other night, and I ain't going to spend a lot of time on that because when you start sowing, nobody, nobody wants to hear. They start dropping off the line. Praise God. Amen. But uh, and that's all right. It's all good. It's all good. And, and, you know, I got a job. I got a job. I got a J-O-B, and I got a good one, too. So to God be the glory. Amen. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, in verse 10, it says, Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Praise God. Somebody y'all go catch that. I remember when I... When the Lord first dealt with me, because I was like, God, I don't want to be one of those leaders that, you know, you know, when you tell people to, to sow and blah, 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 and whatever. But God dealt with me. He was like, nope. He said, no. Nope. He said, because there's an honor in it, and, uh, and, and there's, a, there's, a, there's an anointing that's connected to it as well. Uh, and, and there's an exchange that's way more than just, uh, than just, you know, you sowing into a leader. I know it, it's networks out there. Some of them make them sow 100 bucks a month. Just to be connected to the network, that's ridiculous. Hey, Amen. I would never do that to anybody. I think that's ludicrous. And I ain't talking about ludicrous in Atlanta. I think it's ludicrous, you know, and to, to force people uh, to, uh, to give you thousands of dollars just to get some, of, you know, some attention from the man of God, whatever. You ain't that special, bro, you know. <laughs> it's not that serious. And, you know, I, and, 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 you know, I, I got a, uh, a baby brother. He passed away last year, and we learned some things about a network that he was connected with, and some of y'all know him. And uh, it, it really broke my heart. I mean, they didn't even send any flowers to the funeral, and he sold, him and his wife both sold thousands of dollars into this network. And I just, you know, that was just like a slap in the face to the family, you know, and I knew my brother was, you know, well connected, and, you know, and it just was ridiculous. So, I mean, but if the Lord put it on your heart, that's fine. You know, if you don't, that's fine. You know, but it, I tell you what, when I finish prophesying to some of y'all tonight, if I've never spoken it to your life before, uh, I, I guarantee you uh, uh, God's going to uh, return quickly. I, I know, and I'm not bragging about that. I just know the anointing on my life, and that's just who I am in the Lord. Amen. And, you know, whether you sow into it or not, that's fine. God's still going to move regardless. That's just what he does. That's his grace. Amen. That's his mercy. God still moves. I, I, you know, and I, I don't put no amounts on it or anything like that. It's just, I just would not do that. Amen. So praise God again. If you want to call in, uh, I didn't even check the board to see how many callers we got. Amen. There's a few. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Okay. Amen. So real quickly, so here's the, here, here's the thing. Um, beginning September the 8th, I believe that's a Sunday, beginning September the 8th, 
uh, the Cash App is up at the up at the top of the uh, the, the live. If you guys didn't see it, uh, the Cash App is up there. But beginning September the uh, the eighth, I'm going to begin um, some some real intense training for uh, those who are interested in um, in, 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 in prophetic and apostolic training. You, you say, Apostle, I've been doing this for a couple of years. So. Uh, iron sharpens iron, and I'm telling you right now, I'm going to sharpen you. I don't care how long you've been doing it. Uh, uh, I've, I've been in a, a, a two or three year download, and God has given me the, the release. I'm so full right now, I'm a bust. Amen. And so I got some things I'm going to be teaching uh, and be sharing in the days to come. I really didn't give y'all nothing, nothing old tonight. I mean, the Lord just kind of released me to share that word tonight. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be uh, teaching the prophets and the apostles. Uh, beginning September the 8th, uh, we're just going to stretch out for a couple of hours. Uh, depending on how many people connect with that training, um, um, I, I haven't decided how I'm going to uh, divvy that up, whether I'm going to split the prophets and apostles. And, and, and so far, right now, you know, uh, I announced this a couple of weeks ago, uh, we got a response, but uh, it wasn't the response that I was looking for. And then, you know, it's a challenge for that, too. I won't be the only one teaching. I've already reached out to... Uh, several uh, apostles that's going to be teaching with me, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be very interactive, but it's going to be powerful. Uh, there are going to be some uh, uh, strong anointed leaders, uh, uh, some of them that I've mentored myself uh, uh, that are, are really doing some great things. Uh, they'll be moving by the Spirit, and I'm telling you, God's going to do some great and wonderful things. And, 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 and those that are sowing right now, to God be the glory, uh, I, I, I speak and pray a strong prophetic flow over your life. Let the grace of God that's on mine also flow on yours in Jesus' name. Praise God. Those that are releasing right now, amen. I just feel that. I feel a strong release tonight. Amen. So I, I really uh, believe in God that uh, uh, those that take part uh, in those trainings will begin to be uh, not so much infused with a greater uh, a release of, of, of the prophetic grace on your life, but it will bring you to a place of maturity. And, and, and that's one of the areas that uh, God has given me a grace to minister in in this coming season because, number one, we need more mature uh, prophets and apostles. Uh, number two, we need those that will operate and, and minister with correct doctrine. Uh, we got some jacked up doctrine out there, some jacked up teaching, and, and I always say this: just because a, a, a prophet is 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 seemingly out of order, doesn't make them false. I'm gonna, I'm going to bring because there's some great people out here, there's some wonderful uh, 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 leaders that that God has raised up, uh, but they they just don't get it. <laughs> if that makes sense, they just don't get it. And, 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 and most of them operate in error versus in, in falseness. I don't think that they're deliberately trying to mislead people. they just kind of going and operating off of something that they was taught by somebody else that was fluky. And so we need to bring a correct balance to the body of Christ. We need to bring greater instruction. Uh, I, I, we need to stick to the word. I'm a, I'm a stickler to the word. And I'll tell you all in a minute, and, and people who know me well, I, I'll tell you in a minute, I say stick to the word. You know, I got some good friends that I've been knowing on Facebook, and I'll, I'll chime in on a post, stick to the word, bro, <laughs> in a minute. I'm just so sorry. I mean, because we, we, we start teaching off of principles versus kingdom and, and, and versus the word of God. Yeah, there's, there's the, the logos and the rhema. I get it. But I don't care how much rhema you preach, your rhema better line up with the word at some point instead of getting all off into left field. We need, we need correct doctrine, we need sound teaching, and we need people who are balanced in the Word of God that got a strong theological uh, 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 intent about what, what they're preaching and teaching from the pulpit. And so that's, one, that's, the, that's the other part that I'll be dealing with in the training, and then, um, uh, and then we'll also be putting a, a, a lot of emphasis on uh, correct protocol for certain things, uh, I, I definitely want to get some of y'all. I, I meet strong prophetic people and apostolic people all the time, and, and, and some of them have been uh, taught by different denominations and so forth on, on how to dress and, and, and how to be appropriate and so forth. Hey, man, we're about the kingdom. We're trying to reach people in the highways and the byways. We're trying to bring in the lost. 
I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a rock. I'm a rock with the brothers that's got the dreads. I wanna, I wanna rock with the white boys that's got on the, 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 the hoop earrings and the tattoos all up in their faces. I wanna rock with them. I, I wanna kick it with them that used to kick it like I kick it. I wanna get with them that like to get it like I get it. Them are the people that I wanna reach. Them the ones I want to hear preaching the gospel of the kingdom, prophesying and laying hands on the sick and casting out devils. Them the bros and the sisters that I'm trying to reach. I, 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 I'm tired of us preaching to each other. I, I, want, I, I, want to, I want to see God raise up some apostles and prophets that ain't afraid to go get the ones that ain't got it yet, that they ain't even heard the gospel of the kingdom. Then I want the ones that go to the other ones that are sitting up in these religious, dragged-out, dogmatic churches, just like the disciples of John when, when Paul came to Ephesus. I want to reach them people, and I want to show them something that they ain't seen before. They said, they said, we ain't even heard. That's what the disciples of John said when they talked to Paul. They said, we ain't even heard that there be a Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. And then Peter began to, I mean, sorry, Paul began to teach to them. And the Bible says that he laid hands on them. They received the Holy Ghost. He baptized them. He said, and then they began to prophesy. That's how we want to preach and teach, y'all. That's the power of God. We should, be, we should be moving in greater power by 2019. Ain't no, ain't no way in the world it should be an apostle standing up in the pulpit and you can't lay hands and people start getting filled with the Holy Ghost. People start getting healed. People start getting set free. We sitting around here playing church. We need to get it right. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to randomly open up these lines and I'm going to ask you your name. I'm just not, I'm, I, I, feel, I feel led to move a little different here. Praise God. So y'all just give me a second. Uh, I'm going to catch my breath and turn on some air because i got the fire of the Holy Ghost all over me. And, and I ain't worked up a, a little sweat. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So just give me a second here. Glory to God. Amen. Please feel free to share the video. Uh, my purpose in playing is to shut this down within the next hour. It's 10.06 by 11 o'clock. I'm going to shut it down. So I pray uh, that you're being blessed uh, uh, right now and, uh, and, that you, and that you just allow uh, the Spirit of the Lord uh, to be free here tonight. Praise God. Y'all just give me a second. I'm going to be right back with you. You've been blessing me. I just, this is like my third time watching you. God bless you, man of God. Amen. Who am I speaking to? My name is Angela Flowers. Bless you, Angela. I heard your name before. Um, you know Apostle Rick? Apostle, that well, sounds familiar, probably. I know several people on here. Yeah, Apostle Rick Clawson? I think so. I think I do know him. I'm familiar, I'm familiar with the name. I'll have to see his face. He's in Austin, Texas. Oh, I bet I do. I'm I'm here in Texas, so probably so. Amen, amen. Uh-huh. Well, 
Angela, I tell you, God is, is, is good. He's faithful, ain't he? <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Jesus. Amen. So tonight, as I, as I begin to, uh, to minister to, it, to, to each and every individual, uh, one of the things that the Lord told me to do is to take the time to also, for some of you that uh, uh, are, are not familiar with the prophetic, as I move, I want to use this also as a teaching moment, too, because um, some of y'all are afraid to prophesy. And, and then y'all also feel some kind of way because you can't prophesy and you come against people who do prophesy in public forums. Like, I've been doing this for years. I've been on, on, on podcasts. I've been on national radio. I've been on radio in several states, Monday through Friday. And this is nothing new. Amen. And, and again, you can't buy this. You can't, you can't, uh-uh. pay, for, you can't pay for this. You, you can sow nope. it to it, the Lord touch your heart, but you cannot uh-huh. buy this. Amen. So uh, we just believe God as we just move into prophetic tonight and the word of knowledge, and we believe God Thank for you. breakthrough, and we just give him all the praise. In mm-hmm. Jesus. And Angela, I just hear the Lord say for you that um, he said you've come into a, 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 a season of decisions. You, you come into a place where you, you've just done so much, and you've just trusted God, and you've given him all that you can in and, and, and it seems like now you're at a place of decisions, uh, even though you've been um, challenged with, with some warfare and, 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 and some things that just kind of came on every side. But for you, mm-hmm. I hear the Lord say, just be still. It's like he's saying, be still and know that I am God. Just be patient because your help is coming. Everything that you've been believing God for, everything that you trusted him for, God says, I've not wavered in my promise. I've not wavered in what I've said to you. And he says, and I'm not slack concerning the things concerning you. He says, just be still and know that I am God. Your answer is coming. Your answer is coming. It's not something that you've got to do. It's not by works. It, it, he said, there's nothing that you've got to prepare yourself for. It's not something that you've got to go to church three or four more times for. There's no more breakthrough. <laughs> Lines. There's there's no more prophetic words that you need to hear. There's there's no more uh, scriptures and no more blogs or or anything that's being written in the realm of the spirit. God says, "Be still." Hallelujah. <laughs> he says, "Be still and know that I am God." You've been faithful. He said, "You've been yeah. faithful, and because you've been faithful in the few, God about to do so much more for you than you can even imagine. So just be Jesus. still. Be still." Am, am I talking to you right tonight? Oh, you have no idea. Oh, my God. It's been a warfare for so long. You have no idea. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise Jesus. God. Praise God. Oh, God. Be still. Be still. God got you. Yes. Everything, everything yes. is, is, is it's a timing thing. It's a timing. God, see, one of the things about that, that, that I like to see God do is that, <laughs> A lot of times we can get to a place where we feel so backed up against the wall. We we feel so constricted in in, in, in in different areas in our life where it just seems like we can't go right, you can't go left. It doesn't matter what you do, it just don't seem to go right at all. Everything is just messed up. The, the spouse messed up, the kids messed up, the dog <laughs> don't even want to come around you no more. That's how bad it gets. <laughs> and, and when it gets to that point, you just you you right on the edge of what God is yeah. about to do for you. God says, "I prepared a place for you." And that's Jesus. what I hear. And, and, and so when your restoration comes, not only is it going to come, and not only is God going to answer the thing that you really believe in Him for now, but God says for you. And I I released this word on the post today. He says for you, I bring you into a realm of exceedingly and abundantly. So, Jesus. Mm. God gonna do way more than what you expected. This is, <laughs> this is this is why we wait on God. We don't Thank move you. in our own strength. Sometimes when we move in our own strength, we cause division, we cause separation, we cause strife, we cause malice, we cause things to to disrupt everything else and everybody else around us. But when you wait on God, God brings unity with people. He brings unity with everyone around us. He, he restores the love. He restores the, the, the health. He restores and he fulfills everything, and even the thing that we didn't even have no clue that he was about to touch. That's how God works. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And that's the word of the Lord for you tonight, Angela. Yes. Praise God. You what, I, Thank you. I, I feel a divine connection. We're going to meet soon because Apostle Rick and I, we, we, we connected. And I'm, I'm in Austin all the time, so I'm pretty sure we're going to, we're going to cross paths one of these days. 
Well, I'm not too far away. I'm about two hours away. I'm not, I, I don't have any problem getting in my car. Amen. Well, look for the announcements because we got the E-Hub of Texas. We also have, uh, we'll be coming to San Antonio soon, and uh, we do have something coming up in Houston in a couple of weeks. So it, we always got something going on. I'm going to keep my eyes open. Thank you, man Amen. of God. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. I like this. I kind of used to move like this on WYCA radio when I was in Chicago. Amen. Next caller. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I got 828 area code. God bless you. Who am I speaking to? Hello? Yeah, who am I speaking to? 828 area code. 828. It's Anna. God bless you, Anna. How are you? I'm good. Thank you guys for another day. Amen. Where you call it from, Anna? I'm good. I'm just being introduced to you, a friend. Uh, I'm in Arlington, Virginia. Arlington, Virginia. Oh, okay. Amen. Amen. How'd you hear about us tonight? My friend in Austin uh, shared you with me. Amen. Amen. All right, Anna. Kimberly just... Bell. Oh, Kimberly Bell. Yeah, I've seen her. I've seen her name. Amen. I'm pretty familiar with her too. Apostle Rick talks about these people well. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Apostle Rick is my buddy, so shout out to Apostle Rick, amen, if he's listening tonight or if he's listening in the archive, amen. He was my best friend, my first. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you a word tonight from the Lord. Is that okay? My first best Christian friend when I came to the Lord 12 years ago in Austin. Amen. Yes. Well, what can, what can I do for you tonight, Anna? Can you hear me okay? Nothing. I just called in. I've been trying to comment, but, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. So what, what can I do tonight? Okay. Can I, I think there's a delay. But oh, okay. I'm just going to listen because there's a delay. Okay, all right, so that's, that's fine. So, Anna, I just hear for you tonight, the Lord says that, uh, that he's, he's about to do some great and mighty things for you. I, I, I see where, uh, even when you was a little girl, I see where you had been praying, and you, know, and, and you were just kind of testing the waters. You really wanted to see what God can do, and, and, and God has always been mindful of you. He just always kind of moved in some favorable ways. It's just like you've just been one that you don't really, really need to go into no deep uh, uh, all-out war-type prayer because God's been mindful of you. But I, I also see, too, that there's just been a season where uh, you, you probably would have benefited from it because there were some disruptions, there were some things that took place that, just, that didn't seem to be, uh, 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 well, I want to say, uh, it, a, a, a really good time in your life. And, uh, and even though you called on the Lord, you just didn't really get the same response that you had expected. But the Lord says that, he says, daughter, he said, trust me when I tell you that I'm still mindful of you. I, I, I'm still putting you in a, in a place where uh, I, I'm ministering to your heart. And, it's, I, and, and I just hear God say you really love him. You, you love God and you always have loved God with all your heart. He says, but I'm going to bring some, some clarity into your life in this coming season. I'm going to put you around some people who, who, who have knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the things that concern the Lord. He says, I'm going to give you a, 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 a grace to, to really operate in that prayer that you used to when you was a little girl, when it seemed innocent. He says that because you like you, 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 you like you carry you, you carry an anointing on your life. There's, a, there's, a, there's an anointing on your touch. It's like when you touch it's like everything just falls into place. You you almost have the ability, like when you touch a, a even a child, a young child, they just they just love on you. They just they feel comforted. They feel safe. And God says, when you begin to pray for others, there are going to be things that even in your own life to begin to line up. They'll begin to come to pass. God says, I'll begin to answer all your prayers once again. He says, and no, I've not, I've not left you, nor have I forsake you. He says, but I want to call you up a little higher because there's a need for you in the kingdom right now. There's a need for your prayer. There's a need for your intercession. There's a need for your simplicity and your, and, and your practice. <laughs> when it comes to prayer. And so God says, I bring you into a different dimension. I bring you into a new place. I catapult you into another, uh, 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 another realm of my spirit, says the Lord, and I call you into prayer, into the deep places, says God. He says, I'm calling you into the deep. 
I'm calling you into the deep. Amen. I'm calling you into the deep. I just hear the Lord saying that. This is a this is a new era for you. This is a new time. In Jesus' name. Say again, I'm sorry. Say say again, Anna. I said in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Anna. Praise God. Amen. We're gonna open up to the uh to the next caller. Uh, seven six two area code. I got you live. How you doing tonight? I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you? I'm good. Who am I speaking to? My name is Denisha. Denisha? Yes. <laughs> Denisha, have I spoke to you before? No. Amen. Where I you think calling this from? This is my first time um, watching you tonight. I'm calling from Columbus, Georgia. Columbus, Georgia. You know Charlie, uh, Charlie Baker? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Praise God. Did she tell you about the show or you just kind of found out on your own? I find that on my own. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, well, Denise, I just hear the Lord say for you that uh, he's also calling you up higher. God is, uh, is, is repositioning you. Uh, I, I see where it's been some times where you felt like you've been a failure when it came to ministry when it came to doing things that God had called you to do, the Lord says yeah. that you're not a failure. You're not. He says you are not the tail, but you are the head. Mm-hmm. He says, and this is one of those seasons that I'm bringing you to a place where I restore your confidence, I, I reinstate your faith, I, I reinstate those things in your life that where the enemy, it seems like he bombarded you and he kept you from doing things that uh, uh, you felt that uh, even in time past where you were being led by the Spirit, but it's almost like the enemy made you think differently. It's almost like he pulled you away from your assignment. A- am I talking good to you yet? Yeah, you, you're talking good. You're talking Amen. good. Amen. And so, so and I'm, I'm saying this for the people that's listening because I'm also making this a teachable moment for some of the prophets that's listening. I'm stirring them up too. Praise God. That's what the Lord told me to do. But I, I just see what the Lord has is, uh, is, is brought you from a place where uh, um, it, it, it's like, you were surrounded by people who uh, pushed you into um, areas that caused you to have inadequacies. It's like when you were coming up short. And the Lord says, no more. Ah, no more. He said, everything that the enemy took from you that he had stolen, had eaten, he said, God says, I'm restoring that back to you. He said, I'm restoring those years that the canker worm and the palm worm and the locust and the caterpillar had stolen and eaten. He says, I'm restoring back even the ones that, that just left you hanging. He said there was those that knew that you were in a time of distress. They knew that you was in a time of trouble. They saw that you was just kind of hanging by a limb, and some of them just walked away. And God said he saw where it wounded you and it hurt you, and it even caused you great pain and great grief. I even see where people even, while they were turning their back on you, and they caused you slander and, and, and all different types of, of, of character malice. But God says, I'm restoring Oh, I'm restoring back the years that, that the enemy stole from you. He said, I'm reinstating you. You a prophetess. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You a prophetess, and I see where you're trying to climb your way back. God says, I'm bringing restoration to your household. He said, I'm bringing restoration back to your name. He said, where the enemy tries to cause reproach against your ministry. He says, I'm reinstating you. I'm bringing you back to a place of of victory and from a place of defeat. He said, even in the places where you felt inadequate, where you didn't feel like you you, you were worthy enough, that you were prophetic enough, that you didn't do enough of this or enough of that, God says, I restore back. I give you back your strength, woman of God. Oh, glory to God. He said, I give you back your strength. Even when an enemy tried to tear you down concerning your jobs, her job, what just one? There was a couple of them. He said, I restore back everything that the enemy stole. The, the next six months is going to be a, 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 a time of restoration. But God says also, too, I'm healing you from those places where you, you found it difficult to forgive. And even for those that reached out for you and tried to reconcile some relationships, God says to go and back and fix it. Go back and fix it because part of your restoration is going to result in you fixing it. Because some of them really loved you, but some of them were so, were so broken themselves, they didn't have no choice but to walk away. Yeah. 
But as you go back and fix them, I'm telling you, tonight there's an anointing coming on you even as I speak prophetically over your life. There's a grace that's going to pour out upon you right now, says the Lord. And even as the healing balm of Gilead comes upon you, when you go back and you begin to reconcile, when you begin to sow love back into them, God says, I'm going to cause redemption to come upon them. God's going to restore some relationships that shouldn't have been broken. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And these were some close folks with you. I see it. I see yeah. it. It hurts you, but God says, I'm bringing healing. The healing for you going to be the healing for them. Thank you, Lord. And it's going to be like ain't nothing ever happened. You see, the word restoration in Hebrew, in the Old Testament, the word he, the, the word uh, restoration or restore is, 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 is called ankra. And that word angra in Hebrew, it means not only do God restore back the way it was, but he makes it better than it was in its, in its former state. And that's what God's about to do with you right now. He said your ministry going to be restored. I, you even, did you have a church? No. I was um, the, the last. It's, it's crazy because you're explaining the dreams God been showing me. Um but the last church I was at, I was a prophet there at that church. Mm. I was a prophet there. Well, what happened to that church? Um, the thing was, I was having dreams. Um, I was very close to the pastor, but I was having God was giving me dreams about the pastor, what was going on. And I brought it to the pastor at teaching what God gave me. And that relationship kind of it ended. It didn't end. It it, it didn't end well. Let's uh, just say that. I see. Yeah. Go back and fix that. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, thing, the thing about it uh, is that sometimes over the course of time, God will God will force maturation or maturity. He'll force it okay. in different areas, and sometimes. When you when there's a separation, uh, God will deal strongly with, with with one person's heart versus the other, and vice versa. It just depends on the situation. Um, but but what's going to push you back in, in, into some different areas? And not only that, like I said, God gonna make it better than it was before. Is is going to them even if even if they don't receive you, but but follow the word, make an attempt to reconcile, because that's one thing that we're all guilty of when it comes to relating with each other. We don't follow the word. We don't follow the guidelines in Scripture when we have an offense between one another. Uh, but the restoration is going to result when you seek the reconciliation, even if you don't think they deserve it. And I'm in the word. I, I, I'm in the word. I, my, my, my mandate, my apostolic mandate, is to bring restoration and love back to the body of Christ. We are healing. We are struggling in the body of Christ because we have we have adopted a false sense of forgiveness, and and, and if if Jesus told Peter to forgive seventy times seventy, that means that requires relationship, and I don't care how toxic we want to make people out to be. Mm-hmm. It's just relational. Yeah, you That's might not be able, you might not be able to deal with them on on a on an intimate basis every day because you know mm-hmm. that. Probably within the next hour, you're going to have to hear forgiveness. <laughs> but if they ask for it, you've got to give it. Yeah. And sometimes, right. and sometimes we have to seek it even when they don't deserve it. And because of who you are and because of the hand of God on your life and because of the assignment that you carry, God is requiring you to, prophet, to prophetically proclaim his word and to restore people back to him. You got a strong, powerful, prophetic grace on your life. You are you got you you got a combination of, of Jeremiah and, and 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 Deborah and and oh my God, uh, uh, what's the other one? And he worked beside Paul, um, uh, Silas. Silas mm-hmm. had a new grace on his life because he helped Paul build. You that, and that's one of the reasons I probably asked you: Did you have a church? Because you got a building anointing on you. Yeah. You ain't got time 
to have bad relationships because even the bad ones going to be good for you. Mm-hmm. You, you, you talking right because I just had a dream, not one but two. You, you talking right. Oh, you glory to right. God. Hallelujah. You said it was, uh, what's her name again? Denise? 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 Mm-hmm. Denise. Denise, I'm, I'm, I don't do this all the time, but you need to connect with me. I need to pour into you some more. Okay. Because you, you, you greater than what you believe you are. And, 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 I'm, okay. and I'm, you're the type of prophet that can, that can use that, you can use that upgrade. Okay. So uh, let, the Lord, let the Lord deal with your heart. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to take the next caller. Amen? Okay. Amen. All right. Praise God. Oh, Hallelujah. Let's see, let's see. Uh, I'm going to get to the next one here in a minute. Amen. Uh, let's go. 678 area code. God bless you. A six, did you say 678? Yes, ma'am. Okay, hi. This is Cynthia Mitchell, old classmate from Gary, Indiana. This is who? Cynthia Mitchell. What's up, sis? How you doing? Hey. You thirty plus years <laughs> knowing know, each other, right? but you know, praise God. I was just catching you on my uh, Facebook feed. I had literally just woke up to uh, you starting your um, your live tonight. Just want to say, you know, God bless you, man of God, because everything that you were saying, especially about the, the those you want to minister to, and how we need to have um, a spiritual discernment and things in this season. Same stuff I've been telling them at work. Because there's uh-huh. something about this Atlanta, Georgia area. They can postulate that they're Christians and everything like that, but have no sight, don't know how to hear from God unless somebody's standing in a pulpit. And it, it, it amazes me. And, you know, as uncommon of a person as I am, you know, I'm just every day, all day, but I love God and got a heart for God. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I share stuff with them and it comes to pass in the workplace, people respect me as a seer. They be like, you know what? That girl be on it. I said, but it's nothing more than when God tell y'all if you get before him. That's right. You, right you know, and so you just you hit on some things that even just this week I have been saying to them. So I just want to let you know that, that, you know, you you, you, you talking good tonight. Amen. Well, I, I'll say this. Um, as, as the Lord continues to use you, you you also shift in. And you've already kind of been there, but you haven't really kind of pushed into it fully. Uh, but mm-hmm. you have the... You, you have the seer's anointing on your life. And when I say seer, I mean capital S, capital E, capital mm-hmm. E, capital R. It's a prophetic <laughs> seer. And, and it's not the first time you heard it, but, but I, even as I'm speaking to you tonight, I'm praying that God stirs it up and mm-hmm. that he begins to infuse it with even the greater grace. And the things that you see concerning uh, even, your, um, even the uh, region that, that you live in. Uh, one thing I always said about Georgia is that Georgia is a hard heaven. It is probably the hardest heaven uh, on the East Coast, and, and especially in the Atlanta area because Atlanta is like black Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And, and not only do we have a lot of secular entertainers, but we also have gospel entertainers and so forth. And so people are so used to being entertained. And then there's a lot of idolatry there, too. Idolatry is very heavy. And so what God is doing in, in that particular area is he's raising up seers, and he's also raising up intercessors, which gets me to the next part, because you have a strong uh, intercessor uh, uh, grace on your life. And because you're a seer, you, you really need to begin to lead, because there, there's a need. For, inter- to, to, for leadership and intercessory prayer. There's a need for people who can see prophetically. There's a need for people who know how to bombard the heavens because uh, what you are identifying is, uh, is, is strategic for the next apostolic and prophetic leaders to come into that region. Because God's getting ready to, God's getting ready to bring in a, a whole new set of guards. Mm. There's a whole other regime of leaders that's coming on the scene. And they ain't going to be nothing like the ones that we've been used to in the last 20, 30 years. Good God. Yes, I said that. I said that. Thank you, Jesus. I said it's going to be uncommon this time. He's going to hide them in plain sight, and you won't even know it. But you know what? What's so interesting is that they've been there 
all along. They've just been getting shut down. They've been getting rejected, and they've been getting misused, and some of them even ostracized. But God says, I'm getting ready to raise them up. They don't, they don't have names, no common names, and people that you've never heard before. But when they begin to move in the spirit, they're going to be moving in power and in might. God says, I'm, pu- I'm, I'm bringing in. I'm, I'm bringing in the Johns and the, and the James and the Peters. I'm, I'm bringing in the, 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 uh, the Stevens, the ones that are not afraid to get stoned for preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He says, I'm bringing in the, uh, the, the individuals like the, the, um, the evangelist Phillips that will, that will supernaturally move in the spirit from city to city and raise up other prophets and prophetesses. God getting ready to really zone in. It's almost like I can see a drone in the spirit. And God using God been using uh, um, the angels of the Lord to spot out these different individuals that said, "Send me, Lord, and I will go." Mm. <laughs> he he he's literally like using using technology and identifying these people. They 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 bear the blood. They they bear the thumbprint, like I was talking about earlier. And you right. got the, you got the print. God put the print on you, and, and, and as you begin to move in the midnight hour through prayer, there's going to be a Macedonian call that's going to begin to come, and, and I want you to be mindful of this, too, because even as you move in that intercessory dimension, there are going to be other women and men that will be drawn to you, and this ain't going to happen at your local church. Yeah, that, that, that this is very true. I, I get more blessings just in everyday interaction with people, especially on my job lately. Um, God has a, uh, blessed me with a favor that is just so uncommon because I'm not from here. I don't, I wasn't, like I tell them, I wasn't born and raised here or educated here. So I move differently. And, and some people, like my boss, she don't like it, but she don't understand it. Yeah. Hey, that sounds like me. Welcome to Texas. Welcome to oh, Georgia. Hello, because, you know, we were born and bred in GI. We didn't know what our times looked like, but God yeah. even that fashioned us. Amen to that. In such a way, you know, because of that. Amen to that. Amen to that. All right, sit there, keep in touch. I, I will definitely do this. I, like I said, whenever I'm not working and I'm, I'm in town and I'm check you out on Wednesdays, yes, God, I will do that. And, man, of God, I'm going to a little something just because you've been a blessing and confirmed that which he already showed. Amen. Amen. Appreciate it. God bless you. God Amen. bless you, too. All right. Praise Amen. God. Amen. I, I'm going to try to make it to everybody so y'all be patient. Um, uh, and again, for those that saw it, Amen. Praise God. Let that blessing flow on you. I mean, connect with that anointing tonight. It ain't. It ain't got nothing to do with uh, uh, you trying to buy anything. This ain't. Um, you ain't. I'm, I'm, I know I ain't got no Simons on here. I mean, I could, I'll, I'll find you. <laughs> praise God. Amen. But uh, we give God praise, Amen, for anybody that's reaching out. Amen. It's going to a definitely a good cause because we got some work to do, uh, not just here in in uh, Texas, but we we looking to venture out in other areas. Uh, let's see. I'm a I'm a go to. Uh, this look like um, look like this is Mississippi 601 area code. God bless you. God bless you. Who I'm speaking to? This is Heather. Heather, God bless you. Hey, Amen. Where you calling from? I'm calling from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Oh, well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. What can I do for you tonight? Amen. Just just let the Lord use you. Amen. Every, yeah. Wait, you got something specific on your mind. What is it? <laughs> Come on, we're going to pull it on you. See, this is another teachable moment, y'all. Praise God. What is it specifically that you really need God to do for you? Um, to just to just um, move and share more things with me concerning ministry and um, yeah, just concerning ministry. Okay. Now, when I was when I was teaching earlier about um, about the fivefold, where did you where did you identify yourself at? As a prophet. As a prophet. Amen. Mm-hmm. Praise God. All right. So. What I really hear the Lord saying for you is that uh, uh, intercession is is going to always be first with you, 
and I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. you heard that before, but uh, mm-hmm. this, this intercession is going to be uh, very key for you in this season. It's going to be a place of, of, of saturation. Never heard God say that one before, but he says it's going to be a place of saturation, a, a, a place of, uh, of, of power. Um, um, it's almost like, it's, it's almost like uh, God's about to literally rebaptize you with fire. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's more training concerning your gifting, and um, there's there's more release, more impartation. There's some things that God wants to stir up in the spirit, uh, and and that's not to say that you uh, you don't already have any experience or even any wisdom, but God wants to shoot you into a greater place. There's a there's, mm-hmm. a, there's a stronger there's a stronger grace. That's, that's coming upon you, and you're going to really need it for this season and the next seasons to come. Um, there's some things that are stirring in your region concerning politics and um, concerning mm-hmm. different things, um, and, and, and I hear the Lord say regarding judges. I don't, I don't know exactly because uh, I'm not physically uh, uh, in that area, but I, I hear the Lord saying there's some things concerning the judges in that region and how things are going to begin to affect the, the, the economy of that state. And, and there's going to be a need for intercessors in that area. It's also going to affect the church, too. Thank you, Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. But there are going to be some things. So, you know, even as, even as prophets, I think that sometimes we get so caught up in, in, in the things that concern the church that we miss uh, things that also concern the city. And many of the major prophets that we study about in Scripture, they also carry the grace for the city. They, they, they had an anointing to minister to the magistrates and administrations and so forth. And so, and, and so I see you moving outside the arena as far as your ministry is concerned, moving outside mm-hmm. of the walls of the church. So don't get comfortable sitting still in the, in, in the church and, and waiting your turn. Amen. You see what I'm going with this? It's, mm-hmm. it's like God is going to develop you outside the four walls. Your greatest ministry going to take place in the, in the heart of the city before it happens within the church. Your name will be recognized among men. And this is what the Lord is saying. Your name will be recognized among men. Like the Bible mm-hmm. says, that your room will make gift for you, and God will bring you into the presence of kings or important mm-hmm. men in other interpretations. So that's what's, that, that's what's going to happen. I see you, woman of God, mm-hmm prophesying to important people who don't even know God. Mm-hmm. And if you, if, if, if you zone in and, and focus your gifting only on just the church only, you'll miss what God wants to do with your life. Your wealth is in your mantle. I'm prophesying mm-hmm. the same thing to you that's been prophesied to me for years. Your wealth mm-hmm. is in your mantle. And so, Father, I'm, I want to pray for you. Father God, I pray that you just begin to stir up that prophetic mantle on her life. I pray that you begin to stir up the Holy Ghost on the inside of you or mm-hmm. of her, Father. Like Jeremiah, Father, you said it was like fire shut up in his mm-hmm. bones. And, God, I pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to take hold of her like never before. God, as you give her the boldness that of a lion, and, Father, even the courage and the confidence that's needed as she ministers the kingdom of God, Father, to important men. Father, I hear you saying important men, Father, mayors and governors, God, Father, people of great statue, Father, businessmen, Father, people who hold contracts, and, and Father, who have, who, who have investments in real estate, Father, and different areas, Father, concerning worldly things, God. And, Father, I pray that she never go broke or never again Father, concerning the things, God, as she's obedient to your word and she prophesied the kingdom of God, Father, to important men. Father, I pray that they would give it to her bosom, Father, shake down, pressing and running over, God, in the name name of Jesus. Father, I can give you praise as you stir up that prophetic grace on her life, Father, even though she knows, Father, that she is, is, is now understanding and capable of, of speaking and declaring of who she yes, are, Lord. of who she is in the spirit realm. Father, I declare that the men and women of God, Father, yes. Even those, Father, that operate outside the kingdom, Father, they recognize her identity, and they will know that you, she was sent by God. And, Father, I give you praise in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I see. I, I, I literally, when you begin to move in this, uh, uh, Heather, I, I literally see these people searching you out. Hallelujah. They're they going to come looking for you because you're a seer. 
and, and, and yeah. you, have, you have a prophetic grace on your life to speak life into them. They'll call yeah. you into places when they need to make major decisions to come and pray for them. Yes, hallelujah. Do, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to say this strongly to you again. Do not let man and, or yourself limit your ministry inside that four walls. God calling you to a greater purpose. Hallelujah. Thank and you. It's your Lord. time. This is your time. Walk yes. in. God told me to tell you that your children are blessed. Your children's children are going to be blessed. You will Glory. leave a legacy. Mm. Everything that he promised you, God says, I'm going to do it for you. Even those prayers that you used to pray when you was in your late 20s and your early 30s. My God, God. Mm. this woman of God, I caused the windows of heaven to open over your life, and I restore Hallelujah. back those years for you as well. I reinstate you as a prophet of the mighty God, and I call you back to a place of purpose, and I restart, and restart that vision that I once put inside of you. God says, go forth and do what I called you to do in the days of the, the living God. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Lord. That is the word of the Lord for you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I it. Mm. God. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. I got to get off in 15 minutes. <laughs> God bless you, Heather. We let you bless you, you man of God. Bless you, Apostle. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Real quickly, let me uh, let me let me announce it one more time uh, for those that are on the call. Uh, I'm going to be training prophets. Uh, I've been training prophets for years, y'all. I've been doing this for a long time, and I'm excited about it. God gave me a release for it. Excuse me. I'm going to be pouring into your life, prophets and apostles. I don't care how much tenure you got. Amen. Uh, uh, unless unless uh, you was ordained before me. And I'm not using no type of measurement stick here. Then maybe you probably won't benefit. I mean, if you feel that way, Amen. But I could definitely uh, 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 move in, move by God's spirit and 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 pour into you as the spirit of the Lord should lead me. Uh, should you decide to, to step on, because it's a challenge for me too. Um, I don't just I don't just give you some more watered down word. I go see God's face concerning what we pour into you, and I and I, and I seek Him daily. Uh, uh, regarding that word. So if you're interested in connecting uh, with that training starting September 8th, uh, it won't be on the live form like this because it's going to be a lot more intimate. We're going to have a whole lot more fun. And, uh, and there will be other apostles that will be doing the training. Amen. And uh, and I'll give you the details of that. Uh, it, is, it, it is something that you need to sow into. Uh, and it don't go to me. Um, I'm actually going to uh, spread that out between some of the apostles and whatever project that the Lord gives them. Uh, and it will also go into some more uh, other trainers. Uh, and even outside of, at least for those that uh, are right here in Texas, if you connect with eHub, amen, you're going to just get a whole lot more because we'll be doing uh, a lot more training um, in the uh, Houston area, San Antonio, uh, Central Texas, and uh, eventually we'll be up in Dallas. And they probably won't move into Dallas until probably like the beginning of 2020. Uh, but uh, but in the, in the meantime, uh, San Antonio will be our next stop. So if you're interested con- in, in connected with that training, uh, you're more than welcome to get uh, to get connected, and um, and then I'll give you some details for that. But you just email me. Uh, there it is, Apostle L A Hill at Gmail dot com, and um, and you can get uh, some more information on that. But we're gonna start September the eighth, and uh, like I said, depending on how many people. Uh, connect. I don't, I, don't, I don't know whether we're going to split it in half, uh, whether we uh, split the prophets and then also have the apostles on another line. Uh, uh, but it's going to be real intense, but it's going to be real fun. I promise you we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, anybody that ever, again, attended, um, I think we did a School of Tyrannius in 2009, and I did a, a, a several sessions over the next few years on the schools of the prophets, uh, which, is, which is cool. I'm not calling this anything... Um, like that, more like leadership training, um, and uh, but 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 basically, I'm I'm getting ready to pour my life into you. That's what I see as an apostle. I, I'm not trying to be nobody's spiritual dad. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to. I don't. I, I can care less if if you choose me to be your apostolic father, because a lot of times that comes with pressure. Amen. <laughs> it does. And unless God say different, um, that's not what I'm looking for. But I will uh, take time to mentor you. Uh, get you where God wants you to go, uh, but I think a lot of that apostolic father and mother crap, some of that stuff is a little overrated. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I said it. All right, so <laughs> we'll bring up uh, the next caller. This is like somebody from the Austin area, 737. God bless you. Hey, Apostle. It's Apostle Kimberly. Uh, it's Kimberly Bell. We were just uh, talking, so I guess I need to email you. Oh, bless you, Apostle Kimberly. <laughs> Yeah, how are yeah. you? Yeah, Apostle Rick spoke down. very highly of you when I had a conversation with him yesterday. Oh, that's wow! Just yesterday, wow! That's, that's yeah. the divine order. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. He everybody that he talks to, he talks to me about him, and he speaks highly of you. <laughs> that's that's wonderful. Well, I was just yeah. thinking, Lord, do you need me to go to this training, or do I need to get to this training? So. I'll email Amen. You for the details. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I tell you, God is really opening up some effectual doors for you. You get ready to enter into a dynamic season. Um, mm. I see you as one that uh, God's going to use, and you like, like myself, you like a spiritual hub, and uh, and there's going to be so much that comes out of you as God begins to use you, especially within yeah. the next for you three years. The next three years are going to be critical for you as you begin to move in your gifting and your calling. You'll see God mm-hmm. begin to stir up some in some areas uh, concerning um, concerning uh, who you are as He begins to identify you as a, as a teacher and and, and 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 who you are as an apostle. As you're gonna bring mm-hmm. great balance, I, I, I see you where you're pretty strict about your theology and 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 you almost like many of the uh, the greats that I've known over the years. You haven't been afraid to kind of bag up and repent for something that you said if it was an error and to make come on. And this is why God is going to use you in such a great and mighty way. And, and, and he's going to uh, use these next three years. You're going to bring so much balance to the body of Christ. And God says, and he told me to tell you too, don't be dismayed if you don't see it because it's happening. It's, 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 it's going to be taking place behind the scenes. And even for some of the people that you pour into and the lives that you affect, even though it seems like they just kind of walk away and, and, and they just kind of mm-hmm. vicariously like they didn't care and, 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 and they wasn't really uh, or, or, or even take it uh, or, or to the point where they take you for granted and they don't even acknowledge you, God says he's going to deal with their hearts even in, the, in, in days uh, past or days later as, as, as you continue to pour into them. So don't, don't get caught up with who is doing what and why they did it to you. Because, oh. it, because it, it, at the end of the day, God's still going to use what's on your life to break what's off their life, whether they like it or not. The, your, your, you, you have come into a literally like a, a, a open heaven, literally. Oh. When you minister, when you stand up, you are in an open heaven. And, and, and those that come into contact with you, those that, those that sit up under your ministry and those that are graced to be in your presence, it would behoove mm. them not to honor you. If they, mm. they, if, they, if, if they don't honor you, that's their fault. So don't get, don't get dismayed, don't get discouraged when it seems like the need ain't met because God going to meet the need every time, no matter what. And, and that is the word of the Lord for you. God, God, your, your next three years, God, God says the, that the people will call you blessed. And you have testimony as a result of it. Amen. That really ain't all, Thank but you. All. I can tell you that ain't all, but that's all he's gonna allow me to release tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen, Brother Apostle. All right, I'll be emailing you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that Amen. word. That bless you. All right, bye bye. All right. Praise God. Let me see. All right. I think we got a few more on here. This Praise is the San Antonio call. God bless you. Right. I think we got a few more on here. This is a San Antonio call. God bless you. Hi. 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 <laughs> you got, How you, got you doing? Me. Hey, I'm y'all. Who I'm speaking with? It's Bridget. What's up, Bridget? How you doing? Long time no here. I see you all the time, but it's been a while since I heard your voice. Amen. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I'm blessed. I can't complain. God is good. Faithful all the time. Amen. 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 I'm a, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just flood you real quick. God about to bless your family, bless you and your family. I see those kids, man. I'm telling you, it was something about. Uh, I think I saw uh, one of the posters that you did, or uh, uh, even the one uh, for your for your baby that's getting ready to get baptized. But it kind of yes, reminded sir. me when y'all had visited that one year, and yes, I think sir. I gave a word to sincere, mm-hmm. and. 
and um and, and so it's like the it's like the spirit of the Lord brought me back to that place. But I saw all your children being blessed, and like they getting ready to move into something so much greater than they that that than far more than what you expected. And so get prepared. And, and and just ready to be like super mama, if that makes sense <laughs> to you. And you probably already feel like you, you're doing that now, but I just see the hand of God on your children in such a mighty way uh, in, in, the, in the days to come as, as they're growing up. And I know you probably like the boys, they're, like, they're getting big so fast, but God's hand is on them so heavy. And so these are going to be some, some wonderful years as, as they continue to grow and as God continue to use them. And, and even for you, it's like God dealing with your heart about a whole lot of things, and it's like you got question after question, and, 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 and even in the depths of your dreams where, you know, you're not understanding exactly what, you, what you're dreaming. But I will tell you, like I always used to say, if you was ever there before, keep a dream journal because it's mm-hmm. going to make sense. It's going to make sense in the long run. And the reason why this happened is because you come into contact with the apostolic, and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> well, I've been running for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and you, you know that. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I just recently made a decision. Like, what's gonna happen is gonna happen. I just want to be stronger, um, wiser, and be prepared. Amen. Well, you ain't got no choice now, cause you got to get it. I mean, it's coming. It's like it's literally like God is opening up the floodgates, and it's coming on you no matter what. And and, um, uh, and and it's it's gonna be a while, but uh, I tell you, when God says He's gonna give you clarity, He's gonna give you clarity. Everything gonna make sense. He he gonna he gonna begin to reveal some things, and and, and just prepare your heart too, uh, as as and, and be open to new friendships, new relationships, uh, and 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 things because God gonna begin to cause different people with different grace to cross your path. They'll be able to help minister to you, and things will be making uh, things will become clear as you allow these relationships. Can you trust everybody? No, you probably not. Can you can you relate? No, you probably can't. But allow God to cultivate those relationships, give them time, and and and, and, and like I said, things will begin to make sense. And a lot of it's gonna have to do too with some connections for your children. Some of those relationships gonna come off like real real fuddy duddy, like I don't know. But you'll be surprised with the resources and the, and the, and the different avenues and, 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 and people that they can also connect you with. So kind of be open and show some grace and, and, and just, just allow God to, to have his hand and have his perfect will in everything that you do. And, you know, one of the scriptures, and I kept hearing, I think I heard somebody say this tonight about trusting God. And when the Bible says to trust in the Lord with all thy ways, acknowledge him and allow him to direct your path. So if that would become your prayer and your prayer time and your seat time of the Lord. Uh, uh, you know, ask God to give you a, a, the, the ability to really be able to trust him and to lead and guide your footsteps. The Bible says that the, uh, the steps of a righteous man or a good man is ordered by the Lord, and God is ordering your steps in this hour. So just get ready and prepare your heart because there are going to be some major changes, but all things are working for your good in this season. And that's the word of the Lord right there for you. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you so much. I received that. Amen. So I will be looking forward to seeing you guys. Um, was it September, you say, or the end of the pagan season? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking at toward the end of October. Okay. Yeah, the end of October. Yeah. I cannot I, I wait. I like San Antonio at that time. So yeah, probably about the. <laughs> it's probably about the end of October. Okay. Well, I can't wait. I plan on bringing a whole lot of my. My good, good, good girlfriends. Amen. Just experience what I experience. Amen. And Are every you? time I I come into contact, whether it's Facebook or in person, it's really a good feeling. Hard to explain, but Amen. it's really a good feeling. Amen. Bless you, Bridget. It was good to hear from you. You too. I'll talk to you later. Be blessed. You'll be in my prayers. All right. All right you too. God bless. Bye bye. Good night. All right, I think we got the, uh, let me see, we got one more here. Amen. 512 area code, we in Austin. God bless you. God bless you. My name is Lisa. My name is Lisa. I was invited on the call by uh, Sister Kimberly. 
Oh, okay. Praise God. What part of you in Austin right now, or are you somewhere else? Yes, sir. I'm in Austin. Well, Brown Rock specifically. Oh, okay. Amen. Amen. What can I do for you tonight, Lisa? Um. Well, I was just listening in. I was just trying to get whatever information I could get in. Um. Also, right now, lots is lots of transition going on in my life, and I just want to make sure I'm walking down the straight, the right path for Amen. what God's trying to do in my life. Amen. You've been before the Lord, huh? Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Praise God. Ooh, you, I might have to minister to you off this air. You, got, you do got a lot going on. Mm-hmm. I, I, I definitely want to uh, want to share this with you. I want to encourage you to, to don't don't let up. Stay mm-hmm. in that posture. Stay in that posture. Stay, stay, stay in the presence of the Lord. Um, allow God to uh, continue because there's some things that uh, the Lord is uh, doing with you. Usually transition. Mm-hmm. Transition basically means that uh, it's not so much that God is moving things out of your life or moving you away. Mm-hmm. From something. Sometimes what He's doing is He's rebuilding and He's uh, and He's recalibrating some ideas, some thoughts, uh, and He's also healing some old wounds and some and some things in your life. And I kind of see God doing some things like that with you right now. It's like He's uh, it's like you want to operate the table. Do, do that make sense to you? Absolutely. Yeah, so let God finish because there's something that God wants to do with you. Uh, you definitely have a strong a, a strong calling on your life, um, and, and, and God wants to use you. He has in the past. You got a you you uh, uh you a psalmist? Oh um, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah, that's on you. <laughs> um. I, I can't go too deep with you right now, not on the call. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, find me on Facebook. We'll talk later. But I, I, I definitely Absolutely. um I definitely want to encourage you though to let God uh finish processing you. Uh, your transition ain't easy. It's not. It ain't been easy. I, I see where you're carrying that weight. I, I, I see where you just been kinda of, uh trying to uh make sense out of things and and, and, and when I say, when, like the Bible says, that your ways are not my ways, your thoughts are not my thoughts, uh, mm-hmm. that's definitely what God is trying to do with you. Because, you know, you, you, you come from a place where, you know, things kind of like worked itself out uh, because you were kind of quick on your feet with, your, with the way you think, the way you handle mm-hmm. things in the past. Uh, but, you know, when God get in the middle of it and, and, and he's trying to, uh, he, he's trying to uh, make some, uh, some adjustments, See, you can't mm-hmm. tell God. To, you can't tell God in prayer, Lord, use me. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And you crying out to the Lord. And then when He finally get to you, He usually do it in a place where it's it's breaking you down. I mean, oh, all yeah. the last compound. And and, and, mm-hmm. and that's that's what's been happening with you. You just gotta stay strong, be steadfast, and unmovable in the Lord. Do not relent from your place of prayer, because mm-hmm. every every time you get into prayer. That's like God stitching you back up, but but mm-hmm. sometimes because the infection is so bad, he he they, you know they got to sometimes they got to go in in another area and they got to flush out the infection. They got to put the they they they, they got to they got to inject more uh more medication and, and 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 to clean out that one area and make sure there's no cancer in that area and and, mm-hmm. and, and because and, and because the the the, the surgery. Is so meticulous and so it's so intense. It's taking time. This ain't something mm-hmm. that this ain't something that you go. It's not no in and out patient surgery. This is something mm-hmm. that this is something that's going to require is 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 years of 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 bad things that came in and and, mm-hmm. it, and quietly and it wasn't your fault. I told mm-hmm. me to tell you. It, it, and I'm talking about the present situation. I'm talking about some things that happened in the past. It's almost like this thing started around 16, 17, 18 years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God said it wasn't your fault. But just stay strong. Stay, don't, don't move from your posture of prayer. Stay there. Hang it tight. Do whatever God tells you to do. Absolutely. And, and, and I know I can't say some stuff to you now because the Lord just told me if I said it, you resent me. <laughs> <laughs> God, God process you. 
let him finish doing what he said he's going to do with you because you, you coming into a, a remarkable place. Your testimony is going to be great. And when you release your testimony, it's almost going to be similar to when Juanita Bynum, when she released that word, when she first, first spoke for, uh, for, uh, uh, for T.D. Jakes with no more sheets. When God get done with you, you're going to have a no more sheets testimony. Amen. But you got to trust God, and you cannot move from your place of prayer. You stay strong and stay stay fast in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah, find me on Facebook because I got some more for you. I'm, I I need to go a little deeper. That's if you okay. want. Me. Amen. Nope, I want everything that's going to help me get through. <laughs> so yes, I'll, I'll find you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. I think that was it. Glory to God. Amen. We praise God for y'all, man. I hope y'all learned something. I mean, I really want to stir up those those apostles and prophets because some of y'all need to be online prophesying more often. Amen. Let God use you. Amen. And I just give God praise tonight. It's 11.05. I'm five minutes over. Amen. So I'm going to be obedient, and I'm going to get off this line tonight, and we're just going to continue to believe God. Amen. For all uh, uh, that that he has uh, uh, put in us to do for tonight. Amen. Uh, don't forget, if y'all are interested in the, uh, in the uh, prophetic and apostolic training, I'm going to start on September the 8th. That's going to be on like a Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening sometime. We'll probably go about two hours, probably similar to this. It's going to be very intense, a uh, lot of revelation. Matter of fact, if y'all uh, if y'all join my uh, Exusia Global Fellowship page, look out for it. I'm a, I'm gonna start posting some stuff on a previous training that I did a few years ago about the revealed mysteries of Christ. Amen. And I can't wait to to post that. It was a real short teaching that I did, but there was a lot of revelation from that teaching. And I'm gonna just post a few things on it in the next days. I'll probably do it uh, in a few days uh, uh, from now, and just put a little bit here and there. Amen. We give God praise for everybody that joined us. Thank God for you, and uh, we love you. And I'll see y'all next time. God bless. Amen.